Hello, this is John Buck, and this ECE320 video, I'm going to show you or talk about periodic signals. Uh, we'll discuss the definition of a periodic signal. I'll show you an example of how to find the period for a discrete time sinusoid. And then uh, I'll also show you like an example of how we can think graphically about what periodicity means in discrete time signals. Okay, so let's uh, get back to our whiteboard so I can show you this. Wrong button. How about, there we go, this one. There we go. All right, so again, our topic for tonight, periodic signals. And again, so for discrete time periodic signals, Let's start with the definition, because that's a good place to begin. We say that a signal x of n is periodic with some period capital N if x of n is equal to x of n plus capital N, and this is important enough, I'll write it in red, for integer n. And also at all times. But this is very important. In continuous time, the signals we might have seen in circuits or physics, to be periodic, the period doesn't have to be an integer, but because our discrete time signals are only defined, like we talked in our earlier videos, for discrete integer values of the index. We need the period to be an integer. So let's look at sort of a, an example, a graphical example, that will give you an intuition of what that looks like. Here's, here's a signal x of n. If we wanted to see if it's periodic, what, it, what this means, if I go back to the definition, is like I'm going to shift the signal by n samples in, to the left or to the right. Uh, and if that works, if, if, if the signal lines up with itself again when I shift it by n samples, that means n is the period of the signal. So we can sort of use the cut and paste tools here in the whiteboard program. We can say if we take the signal here and make a copy of it, and then I want to shift this copy, well, if, uh, n plus capital N is moving it to the right. So I move it one, two, three, four spots to the right, and now I see all the signal lining up. And so the signal is equal to itself when I've shifted it four spots. That means the period capital N is four. So we don't have to do it this way with some, some practice. Let me get that out of the way. With some practice, you can just do it mentally with your eyes if you're careful. But we would say for this example, oh, that's, that doesn't need to be read, sorry. For this example, we would say the period n equals 4. So let's uh, move on and see for uh, discrete time uh, sinusoids how we can find the period. And I'll show two short examples here. If x of n, say, is equal to the cosine of let's say pi over 2n. But one of the important facts we know from about cosines and sines is that cosine is equal to itself if I shift its argument by any multiple integer multiple of 2 pi. Right? So cosine of x plus some multiple of 2 pi is equal to cosine of x. And so that says if I want to figure out if this is periodic, we say, well, I need to see If x of n plus the period is equal to n, x of n, breaking that down, that would be saying, like, well, I need cosine of pi over 2 n plus n to be equal to the original signal, cosine pi over 2 n. But we just said, well, one way, the easiest way to do that is if by shifting by that n samples, 
I've effectively... Oh, got that wrong. I've effectively moved by some multiple of 2 pi. So we say that we, we know that cosine pi over 2n is the same as pi over 2n plus some integer multiple of 2 pi m. And so to make these equal, right, I'm going to compare the argument. I say I need the argument of this function to be equal to the argument of that, right? If the two cosines are equal, if shifting by n in time is the same as moving the argument by some multiple of 2 pi m, then the signal, the cosines will line up and the signal will be periodic. So we're saying to solve that, I'm saying, ah, should be white. Go back to my base color here, save the blue for emphasis. So we have pi over 2 n plus capital N needs to be equal to pi over 2 n plus 2 pi m. So this would be if I multiply, distribute the pi over 2 through the equation, I have n over 2 pi, well, I should have kept the pi over 2 together, and I have pi over 2 n here plus 2 pi m. And now I look at this and say, well, I can subtract this off from both sides. It's always more satisfying to cancel terms like that in red. And so now I'm getting pretty close because I've got an equation on the left-hand side for the period. I've got n times pi over 2 is equal to 2 pi times some integer m. And again, we have to, important to remember that that multiple of 2 pi has to be an integer multiple. But now I can go back and say, well, I can divide both sides by pi, then multiply both sides by 2. I could think of it as multiplying both sides by 2 over pi, I guess. And when I do that, I'd have n left on this side, and I would have 4m on the right-hand side. So if I choose the smallest integer I can for m, that still makes capital N an integer. So choosing m equals 1 means that the period n equals 4. Okay, so that's a simple example. And in fact, this cosine pi over 2n is uh, cosine of pi over 2 is uh, the, the signal I drew on the previous page. It has a period 4. So this signal here is cosine of pi over 2n. Let's do one more because it's not always as easy as this. I want to show you one other example where there's a little more of a wrinkle to it. So imagine for this case our signal x of n is equal to the sine, just to change it up some, sine of uh, 3 pi over 5 n. And so the question we're trying to answer is, is it periodic? And what is the period? OK. So sine has that same property we mentioned with cosine a minute ago, right? That for any value of x, integer or not, sine of x is equal to sine of x plus any shift of 2 pi m as long as this m is an integer. So we're back to using the same technique, but we'll see how it plays out just a little bit differently here. So we're saying I need sine of 3 pi over 5 n plus n. By shifting by the period in time, I need to make sure this is equal for all values of little n. This is equivalent to adding some multiple of 2 pi to the argument of the original signal. So again, plugging these in, I get 3 pi, or if I distribute the argument, pulling out the argument, I should, should highlight it. So again, I'm going to figure out how to solve this equation to make it easy 
make it equal to that. Or if you like another way, you can say I'm taking the arc sine of both sides, leaving me with just the argument. So I have 3 pi over 5n, 3 pi over 5 times capital N is equal to 3 pi over 5n plus 2 pi times my integer multiple m. Right away I can spot that I can subtract 3 pi over 5n off both sides and then I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, 5 over 3 pi to get the capital N alone. So I have n is equal to 2 pi m times 5 over 3 pi. Pi's cancel. And so I say, well, the period, which has to be an integer, will be 10 thirds m. So what I need to do is look at that and say, well, 10 thirds is not an integer. The, the question I need to address is what's the smallest integer What's the smallest integer m so that n is, in, is an integer? I don't have to stare at that long to say the answer to that is say I'll set m equal to 3 and that will give me n equal 10 for my period. Okay, so this is an example that's slightly more complicated that by the time I solve the sinusoid to find the period, I may find initially this thing I got, this multiple is not an, not a, uh, not an integer, right? this piece here. And so I'm going to need to figure out what I can multiply by to make it an integer. And an interesting question is, is that always possible? Is there always some value I can do for that? Well, you'll get to see that in the homework. So again, to reiterate, the main point of the video today is uh, what is the definition of a periodic signal? That is, if, if I shift the signal by the period integer period, capital N, I get the same value of the signal back. Second, you know, we saw that what that looks like graphically. It means if I pick the signal up and move it by the period, it's going to match itself again. And then the final thing is uh, I showed two examples of starting from discrete time sinusoids and using them to solve the period which relies on the, the underlying periodicity of cosine and sine, that if I shift them by a period of 2 pi, by a multiple of 2 pi, shift the, the argument by a multiple of 2 pi, I get the same thing back again. Okay, so that's all for this video. I'll see you next time.